Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Renee and today I'm doing another Draw This In Your Style challenge. So for this Draw This In Your Style challenge, I am working in Clip Studio Paint. This is my favorite program to work in when I'm doing digital art. And let me just say, I am so excited about this one. When I first saw this image, I had to do it. I had to do it. Like, it just screams everything I love. I just love how mildly disturbing this image is. And <laughs> I knew it would be a lot of fun to draw this. To start off, I'm using the pencil tool to go in and do a very rough sketch. As I explained in my Jasmine video, if you have not seen it, go watch it. I am just going to jump right in after these pencils with my painting process. I am not slowing down to take the time to do any sort of line art because I know that the way that I like to work is that I like to end up with a more painterly feel. So I'm not going to waste my time really trying to perfect those lines when I know they're going to disappear. Picking the colors for this piece was pretty interesting because I did not go in and just, uh, you know, use the eyedrop tool to take the exact colors from my reference image. In fact, I didn't even have my reference image up the whole time that I was working. I do have it up for you guys just so you can see, you know, and kind of compare what I was doing. But it was right around this point here when I finished putting in all the flats that I just got rid of that reference image and I went ahead and I did my own thing. <laughs> so when I'm working in Clip Studio, I actually try to work with as few layers as possible. I don't like having a lot of layers and trying to keep track of this and that. Honestly, it, to me that's just too much work. I know there are a lot of digital artists that love using multiple layers and they do all the different layers effects and this and that. That's not me. I want everything on one layer. Like I said, I like to work in a very painterly style so I don't tend to use layer effects often. If I'm unsure about something, I will put it on a new layer before. I commit, but once I'm ready to commit to something, I just go ahead and merge my layers right back down. The hair in this piece was actually my favorite part. When I was first looking at the reference while doing my sketch, I originally thought she had bandages, but no, that's her hair! So I had to go back into my sketch and rework it so that that's all her hair wrapped around her. And that was so much fun to do, and kind of just bringing the background in and cutting into bits of the hair. I really like that. <laughs> I think that's something I'll try to carry on into more of my pieces. This nose, this nose, so I really need to decide early on what angle the face is because at first I have her in this three-fourths view but then I drew that nose as if it was straight on from looking at the reference and I was like well maybe it's only a slight three-fourths no it was a full three-fourths and I needed to have made the nose accordingly which I eventually did I stopped trying to make that nose look straight on I don't know why I even tried to make that work when like in my head I was thinking Renee that's not right, Renee that's not right and well yeah long story short listen to yourself you know what's right you know what's wrong. <laughs> I 
have to say one of the fun things about this challenge that I found is after I'm done looking at how other people have gone in and done the same challenge. So when I found this piece, I actually did not go into the tag. I did not look at what anyone else did. I was just very much, I'm going to do it my way first and then let me go see how other people did it. And if you're on Instagram, please do check out this hashtag because there are some really, really good pieces in there. Like, I was blown away by some of the work that the people did. I know that that bright white light on the inside of her hair isn't realistic as well, but I really love it. Because I noticed in the reference there were some bits of hair that were like bright white and then some that were like black, like pitch black. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but that's the way I interpreted it. I was like, I'm just going to have the inside of her hair on this side glow. <laughs> adding that drool it kind of looks like the eye is just dripping out Ooh. like it was kind of creeping me out a little bit to paint it so that was fun <laughs> I do really like the slightly disturbing factor of this piece I don't know what that says about me <laughs> And doing those eyelashes, let me tell you, oh my goodness, I could not get those eyelashes to look right. In the end, I did turn, I think I made the top lashes black and I kept the bottom white. And I think that really helped out because I could not get just full white lashes to work. That's something I've never been able to do. They always just look absolutely crazy to me, but I've seen other people do it and do it well. One day, I will do full white eyelashes and I will do it perfectly. I will execute it in such a magnificent way. This was not that time. <laughs> Okay, so here's the final piece. I am super happy with how this turned out. I think it's just the right level of disturbing. Please do go check out Peachip. Their Instagram is amazing. I will have it linked in the description box below. If you want to see this piece as well, I have it on my Instagram and I will link that too. And please do give this video a like. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps me out immensely. I will be posting videos twice a week. I am so excited to be here on this YouTube platform and sharing my art journey with you all. So with that, 
Everyone, have a great one. See you soon. Bye.